We've all heard that stress is bad for you, but why is it bad for you, and how exactly does stress affect the body? I decided to read some research papers to find out. Let's start at the top with the brain. I found that prolonged severe stress can cause structural changes in the brain like the hippocampus and the amygdala, decrease in dendritic branches and decrease in the number of neurons and a reduction in hippocampus volume. Lots of big words there, but what does that mean? It means that it can affect your memory. I'm sure if you've been through a period of stress, you'll have noticed that you had trouble remembering some things. The good news is that this is reversible, and when the stress subsides, the memory improves again. Probably the most well-known effect of stress is on the heart. Stress can stimulate the autonomic sympathetic nervous system to increase vasoconstriction, which means the muscles in the blood vessel wall constrict blood flow. This leads to an increase in blood pressure. This can lead to atherogenesis, which means plaque forming in the arteries. Of course, this doesn't happen overnight, but prolonged stress over a lifetime can lead to a heart attack for some people. Another common effect of stress is on the digestive system. The gastrointestinal tract, or GI tract for short, is the path that food takes from the time it enters your body to when it leaves. And stress can interfere with that process, causing delayed emptying of the stomach, and accelerate the speed at which food is processed through the colon. Stress can also increase the response of the GI system to inflammation and may reactivate previous inflammation and accelerate the inflammation process. In fact, many inflammatory diseases such as Crohn's disease and other ulcerative diseases are thought to be linked to stress. And probably the most common GI problem linked to stress is irritable bowel syndrome. By the way, there's some really interesting research showing that hypnosis can help IBS for some people. So if you do suffer IBS, you might be interested in my hypnosis for IBS video, which I'll link at the end. There are also some surprising effects of stress, like the release of a stress hormone called CRH, which can cause a cessation of the release of growth hormone. So stress could even affect children's growth. The stress has also been found to suppress the immune system, which may explain why you often fall ill after a period of stress. So with all these bad effects of stress, you may think you should avoid it altogether. But this fascinating research paper reported that short-term stress enhances wound healing, the immune system, and even anti-tumor immunity. The report talks about a stress spectrum. On the good end of the spectrum are rapid stress responses to a stressor, which then ends as soon as the stressor is gone. These can enhance protective immunity, mental and physical performance, and overall health. On the other end is bad stress that involve chronic or long-term biological changes that may suppress the immune function, decrease mental and physical performance, and increase the likelihood of disease. So how do you stay on the right side of the stress spectrum? Well, I'll be making videos on ways to manage your stress, so make sure you subscribe and check out my stress management playlist. Take care now.